Before the slip length topic, let's recall the definition of no-slip boundary condition. The velocity of a fluid in contact with a solid impermeable wall must equal that of the wall along the fluid solid interface. If in particular the wall is stationary, the fluid adjacent to the wall must have zero velocity. The picture shows the development of velocity profiles due to the no-slip condition as fluid flows past the blunt nose and a flat plate. Then what's, what is slip boundary condition? It's simply the condition where fluid velocity differs from wall velocity. The difference is called slip velocity. You may think you have understood well, not really. In fact, there is still no fundamental understanding of slip. Navier's slip boundary condition in 1827 assumes constant slip length, but it's not always true, but it doesn't matter. Let's start from microscopic sense. The mean free path is the average distance traveled by a moving particle between successive impacts, or say, collisions. The Knudsen number Kn, not the Knudsen low fat cottage cheese, is a dimensionless number defined as the ratio of the molecular mean free path length to a representative physical length scale. This length scale could be, for example, the distance between two parallel plates. At high Knudsen number, the interaction between the flow and solid molecular has low collision frequency. As a result, the equilibrium between the velocity cannot be established. Knudsen number is useful to determine whether the flow is in continuum, slip transition, or free molecular region. In two-phase microfluidic flows, surface tension forces are dominant relative to other forces, and the Knudsen number is large, reducing the length scale characteristic of the problem to the, that describing the lighter phase inclusions. The picture shows the flow through a corrugated channel at small and moderate Knudsen numbers. Slip velocity at the walls in the latter case, absence of recirculation and homogenization of the flow are clearly visible. We can derive the slip length from the first order slip flow condition in fluid dynamics. Flow velocity is the first order expression of distance in y direction. Near the wall, a molecule hits the wall and gets reflected. The followings are all mathematics. At one mean free path from the wall, we can write the slip velocity by tangential momentum accommodation coefficient. Maxwell worked out the slip velocity expression for isothermal wall in 1879. We rewrite variables into vector forms and get simple expression with constant alpha. Boundaries at y equals 0 and y equals 1 provides the relationship between c1 and c2. After solving the equations, we extrapolate the flow velocity profile to 0 and get the slip length expression. To conclude, the constant of proportionality in the slip condition relating slip velocity and boundary velocity gradient is known as the slip length. Slip length can be interpreted as the depth into the boundary at which the velocity profile would extrapolate to zero. Thank you for your attention.